the steps. I'll talk through the steps, then we'll have a go. There's a small amount of work on the primary database that we do in preparation for setting up DataGuard. Firstly, some adjustments to the physical structures. Now, these are the adjustments that we need to make. We must be in archive log mode. That's a given. Then we enable database flashback. Strictly speaking, not required, but definitely a good idea. We force logging, because if we permit users to do no logging operations, that will cause real problems in a data guard environment. And then we need to add the standby log files. Again, strictly speaking, this isn't necessary in the primary, but we should always do it in preparation for world versals later. These are the standby log files that are going to receive redo from a primary database. Having done that, we need to make some adjustments to the primary database instance, to the memory structures. And what are those changes to the memory structures? It is one, two, three, four, five, six, it's nine parameter changes. We need to specify a unique name for the database. My primary database is going to be called London. My primary database is London. Then we need to specify the log archive config parameter, which is the names of all the databases in the data guard configuration. I'm going to create a second one called Berlin. So London will be my primary, sending redo to Berlin as the physical standby. We need to configure archive logging. Destination one will be the fast recovery area. Destination two will be a TNS names alias pointing to the Berlin database service, the standby, and defer redo transmission for the time being. FAL, fetch archive log, again, optional, but very good practice. The address to go to if we ever need to resolve gaps in the redo log stream. File name conversion parameters for data files and for log files, so we can map, remap file names for which will assist with the automation of file management. So those nine changes will prepare the instance of DataGuard. So some physical structures, some memory structures. Then we have to configure SQLness. No big deal. I need to edit my listener.aura files on every machine in the environment to enter a hard-coded system identifier list, a SID list, so that the listeners know what instances are actually there. We can't use dynamic instance registration in a data guard environment. And then I need to configure TNS names to let me resolve the addresses of the primary, which is that instance, and the standby, which is that instance, deterministic connect strings. After that, that's the preparation work, we instantiate the physical standby. Instantiating the physical standby, easiest to do it with RMAN. We connect to the primary London as a target and to the auxiliary database, which will be Berlin, to the auxiliary there. And then a simple script. Back up the control file with two extra keywords for standby. That instructs our man to create a standby control file. Then back up the database. In the real world, of course, you will already have that backup. But because I'm starting from nothing, not even in archive log mode, I'm going to have to do that live. Back up the archive logs, and then a duplicate database command. Note again the keywords for standby. That instructs Oracle to restore that standby control file when we do the database duplication. And that should be it. We then start redo propagation from primary to standby, and we start redo apply at the standby site. So those are all the steps we need to do.